Golem is a fantastic framework who builds Shiny apps. It is a framework that is built on top of the Shiny framework. And the nice thing is that once you've set it up, you can build a really small Shiny app with it, but also a really large app with a whole bunch of modules inside of it. And the framework always stays the same and it helps you to navigate the different sizes but it can also feel incredibly daunting in the beginning so let me show you how to navigate through all of the different parts that golem introduces to initialize the golem project you need to first install the golem package assuming that you've done that you can from the command line just write golem and then call the create golem function where you specify a path to a directory where you want to save your golem project in if i look into my explorer i can see here that i have a directory called uh, golem already so inside of this 110 golem directory i can specify a new directory name for my golem project and here let's just take something like golem youtube demo you make sure that the name for the directory that you use doesn't use any underscores or so because golem doesn't like that other than that you can just create one and in my case here you see that i get a warning message but that's just because my project is set up like this don't worry about this in your case you shouldn't get a warning like this so for this video here i will just say agree so let's clean this up a little bit so now we have a new project and more importantly if we look into our explorer we see that we have a couple of directories already and a couple of our our scripts and some files like description and so on. If you have been building our packages before, then this will feel familiar to you. If not, don't worry about it. There are some particular things you have to take care of due to this package structure, but I'll explain that as we go along. For now, we can just take a look at our dev directory and start with the 01 start file. In this file, we can go through all of the functions that are in here. We could, for example, create a description for our package slash golem app by executing this code here of course we'd want to fill this stuff here with meaningful content so in my case i put in my name here and my email and so on and then i could just re-execute this and configure a whole bunch of stuff we could also set golem options install dev dependencies like detachment if we want to do that here i don't want to do that so i won't but there's a whole bunch of things and the nice thing about this is that all of this is optional you don't have to use any of these commands here so feel free to just use this last command to skip to the next file, namely the o2dev file, which is also the exact same file that we have seen in our dev directory here. So this file once again contains a whole bunch of helper functions that will help you develop your Shiny app. For example, if you wanted to add a module to your Shiny app, you can use the golem add module function. If you want to use a helper function, you can use add function. If you want to use a even less important helper function, you could use add utils and so on. That's how you read all of these functions. If you need some JavaScript or CSS or ZUS files, you can use these functions here and Golem will place them at the corresponding spot where it needs to go according to the Golem framework. Sounds really complicated, but it is actually super helpful. Just remember that these functions are there and I'll show you how to use them for specific cases. But fundamentally, you just have to remember that these functions exist. And then when you need a JavaScript file and don't know where to put this in this framework, just know there are helper functions that does exist exactly what you need. Okay, so now we have seen the helper scripts that are inside of the dev directory, but this doesn't actually tell us where our shiny files are, where the R code lives that later becomes our shiny app. And for that, we have to look into the R directory and it's really where all of the R files live. So let's check that out. There you'll find an app UI script and an app server function and an app config file and a run app file. All of these are sort of important, but the nice thing is that the run app and app config you can ignore for now. You just have to worry about the app UI file and the app server file. As you can probably imagine, these things contain the UI and server part of your Shiny app. And once again, this feels really intimidating because there's a lot of stuff. If you haven't seen this notation before, just just ignore it. This is a notation that R packages use. And since every Golem project is an R package, you can use that here as well, but you don't have to. You can for now just focus on the things that actually matter. And that is having some content inside of your app. And there in your UI, you just have to use a tag list. And inside of this tag list, you can put in all the UI things that you want for your app. Similarly, there is another function that is called 
add external resources. This is actually the one that is called here. This is the one that allows you to, if you have CSS files and so on, to place them here as well to include that. But to begin with, you actually need to worry only about the UI part first. And in the server script, you see here that this contains just a good old server function that is currently empty. So let's try to fill this with something. So here inside of our tag list, inside of the fluid page, we can add more stuff. For example, we could add a select input with a specific ID, a specific label, and then we just throw in a couple of choices. Here I'm using the fruit vector from the string R package that just contains a whole bunch of fruits inside of it. And similarly, we could also put in a text output to just render our selected fruit to. And in order for this to work, we have to on the server side, make sure to grab the input my selection and render the selection output. So on the server function, we can just take our output selection output and render it using the render text function, where we just stick together a simple string using the glue function from the glue package. And then we just put in a string that says your favorite fruit is, and there we use the selected input. So if we save all of this, we now have a UI and a server. But this begs the question, how do we actually run this thing? And for that, the answer is actually pretty easy. All we have to do is to, from the golem package, call the run dev function, which will run the development version of our package and our app. So if we call this, we see now that this started to run and we see here that we have our UI and we have our server connected because we can see now that as I select Apple here, I will have Apple in the output. And as I select another fruit, I will have another fruit in the output. Okay, so now you should have an understanding of how the different R scripts inside of the R directory play together to build your shiny files. Now let's rewrite our app using some of the helper functions inside of the dev directory. For example, we might want to create a helper function and we do that using the add function function from the golem package, add function function kind of sounds weird, one function to many, but let's just go with it. And here we see that we also have a with test argument. This will also create unit tests for this. I don't want to cover those here, so let's just go with false on this. And now if I run this, you see that it's currently not doing anything because the app is still running. But as I close this, you see now that a file was created at r function generate fruit text.r. And if I look into my explorer here, you see here that I have a new script here. So that's pretty cool. Golem created a new function script for my helper function and placed the corresponding file into the r directory where all r scripts that contain app code need to go. And now I can actually fill the script with a function. Let's just call it generate fruit text. That depends on a fruit name. And in there, we can just stick in the glue code from before. So inside of our server function, we can just replace this part here with our own function that is called generate root text input for that is just what we selected. So now I can rerun my golem app and we can see that things work exactly like before. Now this sounds mundane, but it's actually pretty helpful to put separate functions into separate scripts because then you can use this code documentation tool here to actually document the functionalities of your helper functions. For example, in our case, we could just throw in this code here that will describe the parameter fruit name and it will say a length one character vector containing your favorite fruit. And the description of this whole function is that it generates a text for the favorite fruit sentence in the UI and it returns a string. So if you've ever been wondering how the documentation pages are made, this kind of stuff is the annotation to annotate functions and this will be translated to documentations that you see in the help page. For example, if you were to open the glue function documentation, you'd see here all kinds of stuff and what you put in to the arguments here is really just a whole bunch of parameters. So really you're using the R tools to document the functions that you use in your Shiny app and this can help you along the way as you build larger and larger apps. Next, let us go one step further. Let's actually not just create a function, let's actually create a module. Let's call this module fruit picker and here we'll also not use unit tests because once again I don't want to cover those here. So if I run this we see here that a new file was created that is now called mod fruit picker and you can start to see the naming conventions here how all modules are in a script called mod underscore and this script is pre-filled with the corresponding UI and server functions and there are even code snippets that we can use to 
to try out the UI and server of our module. So for our user interface, let's just combine the select input and the text output inside of the tag list, just like we've learned when talking about shiny modules in a previous video. If you haven't seen that video yet, make sure to look at it because shiny modules are really an essential tool to create great shiny apps. There should be a link popping up right about now if you want to go to that video, but you can also stick along this video here and watch the module video later on. In any case, into the tag list just goes our input and output. Just make sure that you wrap the IDs into NS calls here to make sure that everything works. As you remember, shiny modules kind of depend on that. And then inside of our server, we can just stick in this code here. And now we technically have a complete module, but for every module, I have the philosophy that there should also be a minimal app that contains only the module and the stuff the module requires to run. So that's why I'm creating a shiny app skeleton here, and then I'll fill it with the snippets of my module here. And now theoretically, if I run this whole script, I can take a look at just my module here. So let's try this. As we are in Positron, we'll also have to make sure to print this stuff. And now we see here that my app starts, but there currently is an error. And I'm pointing this out here because this actually is a crucial thing to understand about Golem. So it's not only nice that we can test modules here, but we also learn more about Golem. You see, I've mentioned a couple of times that every Golem app is also an R package. And inside of R packages, you have to tell from which package a function comes that you use. For example, inside of my helper function, I've always declared from the glue package, use the glue function. Or in my UI, I've used from the string R package, use the fruit variable. And the reason why I had to do that is to make sure that everything works properly. But the thing is, if you just source the script here, the script will not know all the functions that you generate as part of your package. And this generate fruit text helper function, it is a function that we have declared as part of our golem app slash package. And this is why we have to tell our current R session, you know what, please also load this function. And we can do that by using the DevTools package where we use the load all function. And now we can see that all of our scripts inside of our package are sourced. And therefore, also this generate fruit text function is available and also this code here was run which is why our app immediately started this right now is our module app here because in our full app we also have this header above that so we can see here this is actually the module code that is running here and if you want to avoid starting the app just because you're loading your packages if you actually want to avoid it it's kind of not a nice to have it's a must have if you want to avoid that you can just remove this print here and that way if you now re-execute everything you see that your app doesn't start and if inside of Positron you want to test your app, you can just source this selected part and then your shiny app is still running properly. So this is a way to have a small dummy app for your module to test module code, but it doesn't interfere when you call load all, namely when you do this here. And since you're going to use this a whole bunch of times, this load all function, you will probably want to know the shortcut and that is control shift L. So that way you can load your functions whenever you need. And this is also important when you update a helper function, you want to also load the package again so that also your sourced helper functions are updated. And if you want to make sure that you're starting from a clean slate, make sure to use Control Shift F10 to restart your R session to make sure that everything works as you'd expect and you don't have some old code still in your session. So I know this was a lot, so let me recap. You can have small dummy modules app to test your modules as you work on single modules. If at some point this stuff doesn't actually render properly because sometimes load all sources files in a weird order, you can all actually wrap this into try catch this whole thing in here and then say on error, you can just use a function that doesn't do anything. So now when you do load all, everything will definitely work. But if you only execute this part here, everything also works. If you're wondering what the heck is Albert talking about, just ignore this try catch thing until you actually run into a problem and then you'll remember ah yeah I can use try catch here. My main point here is that you want to have a small dummy module app to test your modules and whenever you want to test your full app again but this actually takes more time because 
then all your other modules, if you have them, will also have to load, then you can always use run dev. And currently we see that in our full app, we haven't actually used our new modules here. So let's change that. Let's go into our app UI and stick in our module. And inside of the server, we can stick in the module server. And now if we rerun this, we see that everything works as expected. By the way, if you've been running other commands in between these run dev calls, you could just type out golem and then press control arrow up and then you see all the commands that start with golem and then you could just select this run dev and that way you don't have to type out everything. Perfect. I hope that you now have an overview of how to use golem and that it became a whole lot less intimidating. Let me know in the comments if this actually helped you and feel free to also ask questions if I left something open. I know that Golem can feel really tricky in the beginning, so don't hesitate to ask if you want to have something explained. Also make sure to subscribe to this channel as I'm going to release more shiny videos. And now with all of that said, I say thank you for watching and I will see you next time.